Okay. So Jenny, when I say stay in the light and avoid the darkness, what, what trips that in your head? Because I know others will feel, I, want, I just want to get your opinion on that. I would say make sure that you're doing something positive every day to help your uh, realtor status, I guess. Don't, just because you don't have clients doesn't mean that you can't like go through your CRM and make sure it's good or send something out to your farm or like your video yesterday, go make a video or something like that. That's, that's what I think when you say stay in the light. Just, just keep yourself positive and do stuff that is going to help in the future. Because we all know once this crazy weather and whatever come March, April, you know, everything's going to go start going again. So that's, that's what I think. Jesse, you agree? Oh, yeah, for sure. I definitely do. I think just uh, keeping eyes on yourself that people can see that you're putting yourself out there um, in different ways and just not staying in your office and not being seen. Yeah. I know we can get, you know, if, they, if things, if fires aren't jumping out of the ground, you can't just ponder over why aren't they jumping out of the ground? You have to look at yourself and say, okay, listen, I got in this business to be a, a light to others. Okay. And when people see that light in you, they tend to migrate towards you versus, uh, you know, everybody's got their issues and problems. And, you know, when you caught in that trap, you tend not to be productive. I, that's how I look at it. Um, you mentioned, Jen, my video. Mm -hmm. okay? I knew that I didn't look my best. I knew that I was trying to appeal to a gigantic builder and trying to do something different. And I knew that my prospect list has dwindled, although my thought process of getting to more clients has increased, okay? So I got, Greg was in on that, Jesse was in on that McKinsey approach. No, I haven't got a listing from it yet. No, I haven't got leads from it yet. Mm -hmm. But John McKinsey has popped me back. Yes, I like it in a text. It's all I need to hear. Okay? It's all I need to hear. Use Susan Finley as an example for, for just a second. Three weeks ago, she was in my office and she said to me, I'm going to go over to this house in the village of West Clay and they might buy it without me. And the wonderment of what might happen versus putting their game face on, meeting with the client, they didn't want to buy it. And now she's on the altar of an $840,000 sale, closing, right? Because you have to turn the light on and say, I'm not going to talk them out of anything, but I'm going to be there for my client to see how we might maneuver to get my first listing, okay? To expose myself to that expired listing thing that I sent you the other day. Did you all get that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looked a little old school, but I had a guy working for me that went on that program mm -hmm. and he took a, he took a area within a mile of his house, used himself as the center, looked for expired listings, wrote a personal note that was delivered, followed up on it with a phone call, and then sent that marketing plan and then followed it up with a, with a resume. I'd say he had a better chance than the person that has never opened up the door to an expired listing last fall, right? So I thought I'd throw it your way because that, that young man was out getting listings. He was getting listings in a way that others weren't getting listings. You know, people, people can always call a builder and say, can I have your listing? And the, the virtual problem is they've already got a, you know, a, an agent they're working with or a company they're working with. But 
that model representative can be your trigger to building a relationship that may give you some leads that he can't sell or may say to that client when you've given them five or six cards, by the way, Jesse Downey, you might really like her. She lives in the area and I know that she can sell your house. It used to be guys that builders would just, my gosh, they had realtors that would buy the listings to get the, to get the listing. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, companies would guarantee if you can't sell your house in 30 days, we'll buy it. Right? So you had no chance to be creative in that, in that gap. So the expired listing campaign really would say to me, I know, I, I now know where Jenny lives after two years of knowing that she made the trip here, but not really knowing her neck of the woods. Okay. <clears throat> so the last two Fridays I, I've gone out to um, McCordsville <clears throat> after being at Tiago, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, update my, my flyer box and to say hi to Aaron, to show my mask in his office, and to just try to build from the bottom up, because I've already built, you know, experience has built me from the top down with John Van Vanen, the pre you know, president of two states with Pulte. And now his DSMs, which are the district sales manager, which, which control guys like Aaron and the other 20 multi reps. I've made a decision yesterday for you guys. I don't think it's right, nor fair, nor pr presumptive on my part, because I know it doesn't work, that a Susan Finley would be right for calling on only Arbor Homes. Okay, and then sharing all that with you. We don't have time for that. But I do know that if Susan wants to develop relationships with model salespeople, and in a tough market where there aren't many listings, where she goes and all of a sudden she explores this new neighborhood, she stops by, she meets a model rep that she's never met. She picks up, she hands out five or six of her cards and says, if any of your people that are buying houses from you, don't have a realtor, perhaps you could share my card with him. Did that two years ago, it actually worked. The guy called me and said, these people I think will list with you because I've sold you pretty hard. It worked. You know, I did it forever, but it finally worked, it paid off. Larry, so I think, yeah. I'm sorry, if, if the, the model has a rep, Mm -hmm. Why would they give them our card? They wouldn't on the purchase end of them buying a house in that right. neighborhood. Because right? Pulte doesn't buy Pulte doesn't buy those listings. So let's say you've got a client that wants to buy a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Let's use Good let's luck. use Tiago, okay? Let's use that as an example. And they come in, and the and Aaron might be there that day, and he says to me because I've established a relationship with that person, I know that some of them are very standoffish, okay? They've already got their connections. But to answer your question, Susan, is the Pulte rep would like to sell the house. Pulte's not gonna buy the other people's home, but he may say, listen, I know of a really uh, energized and, and relentless agent that I think can sell your home quicker to help you get through this gap and get the lot that you want, okay? That leans back on you to what kind of, how you built that relationship. Let's say like with Jenny out in McCordsville, where Zach Johnson is there. I, I fully believe that over a period of time, Zach will be giving Jenny leads of people that wanna come into that McCordsville neighborhood where those two specs sold. Jenny, could you believe that? They sold. No. Well, and yeah. I was talking to Rick yesterday. Um, I'm not sure if they have many lots left. Just driving through there, everything is sold, the lots. And there was only 55 lots. So we'll see. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good area. There's a lot of fallouts, Jen, okay? 
there'd be fallouts. So yeah, my, my yeah. guess is I did the same thing. I drove through there. They don't have any foundation started. There's probably going to be at least 10, 15. So Susan, maybe that helps you a little bit. I mean, you don't, they, they would only, because they can't, they're not realtors. Right. Okay? They don't have to have a license to sell model homes. Okay. So they can't just say, and they're not probably going to get a kickback from XYZ Realtor for suggesting because that would be a reason for them to lose their job, I think. So it's just for the person who's going to come in and build yep. in that neighborhood that has a house to sell. Yeah. But what I think it really does is if we lean back on what Jenny just said, she drove through the neighborhood and saw that most of the lots are sold. It's an awareness thing, okay? I think Jenny Kona now knows what those two houses are all about. And if she had to, you know, you never know when one of those model reps is going to say, I can't be here for an hour or two. I've never, this has never happened to me. Could you sit here while I go home and take care of my kid for a minute? I don't know if that would ever happen. But basically, that's what you're trying to act like. You know enough about the neighborhood that you could spur somebody on through social media, taking those two McCordsville houses that just sold, posting them to either whatever social media platforms to indicate the, at 388,000, you could own a new two-story in McCordsville. Boom, like these that have just sold. There are 14 other lots available. Contact Jesse if you'd like to see one of these homes or set up an appointment, right? It's important to know these reps because you've got to get on the phone and say, by the way, I've got Tom Jackson coming to take a look and I want to record him as my potential buyer, okay? Hopefully Mr. Jackson, Tom Jackson has said, yeah, Susan, if you can get me set up, I'd be glad because you've got to be able to know this is something that I had a hard time with when I was early, early in my career. You got to know that those builders are pricing things with a realtor commission in, and they're mostly not going to take it out. Okay. You're going to have a certain influence from a group that buy that are always going to think they can barter the realtor's fee out. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case because they're getting 90% of their business from realtors. So it's, I've made a decision that, you know, we've got great people sitting here with three, three up in um, Fishers, Carmel, Michael. Michael, you're there, I assume. Anyway, Mike's up in Noblesville, Westfield. But I can't say, I don't think, I don't think it's ever worked where I said, Mike, you go up in Westfield and and uh, Noblesville, and then you convey back to Susan and Jesse and, and everybody else in the company, everything you know about those neighborhoods. Too much information, right? But if, it, but if it's in the locale, I'm gonna go back to Jenny. My, I went, I almost slapped myself. I thought, God, you are so unaware of what a good deal McCordsville is, okay? So unaware, Larry. When you just get to 104th and all of a sudden it jumps to 433,000 for a ranch. And you, by the way, Greg and Jesse, I got word from um, Josh last night that they'll sell it for 425 if we get a buyer. Okay. So if you get a, if you get a buyer, there's two Tucker agents that have shown it that are indicating they might have interest, but I haven't got anything yet. But he said, Josh said they, they take a little off. I started this relational thing with Pulte reps a while back when I decided I wanted to get some of Mike Sheets's business. Okay. I made a decision. I, I was not going to sit back and just be told it's a corporate contract with Sheets. You've got no chance. And then and the reason I did that is I saw no flyer boxes. I saw no flyers. Yeah. You only get as a, as a listing broker, I, the reason I am in that position is John Van Banen has added me to his profile. 
okay, to be another company that represents. But I can take my agents and I can let them build some of their business from it and I can let them market into it like I'm trying to do with you, Jim, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe it'll work. But it only works if it's in an area. I'm not suggesting to you, Greg, that you go to Plainfield and learn every spec home in Plainfield, okay? Because that's kind of what happens. But you should know the things that are in your area that you're trying to market to, to bring some buyers to your attention. So you could say, so Jesse could say, hey, by the way, there's a, there's a $388,000 spec home being built in McCordsville. And if you don't have a, if you don't have a restriction on schools, do you want to look at it? Bingo, and that's coming from the spec homes that we have as a company. So does everybody kind of get that? I mean, I've talked about it a lot of times. Jenny, um, you've been, our, you're my veteran and our, one of our top agents. What, what's your perspective on this? Well, I didn't, honestly, until I went over to Oakcrest was the first time that I really, I guess, knew, knew about the spec kind of things and, and what they had to offer. So um, besides, you know, I think, I think I opened some of your like MI when you had MI homes or um, things like that. But I mean, you can get leads from opening those houses, but it makes you feel good when you can go in and like you said, relate to a rep and you, you like, you know that they're your rep, you know, and um, like with Zach at Oakcrest, I feel good because he told me, he's like, you know, I'm from Zionsville, you know, on the west side of town more. I don't know anybody on the east side of town. So I'll be happy to take your, you know, cards. And, you know, since you live out here, you know, the area, you know, I would be happy to give them to somebody. So, you know, it makes you feel good when you can make a connection and just makes you want to go on to more and make more connections. So. And you know, we're having to do this guys, whether you know it or not, we've had a really good February. Okay. Um, despite the marketplace, we've had a good February. And I would anticipate with the weather getting better, like Jenny said, there'll be more and more buyers. And maybe because most of you live in homes that are above this 250 war zone, okay? By that, I mean the under 250 market. You got to have your spurs on. I heard of an offer, 54 offers on one house. Mm -hmm. Last night, my wife's on the phone. If you don't know Kathy, she's very detailed. Yeah, and she's determined as all get out, okay? She's working with three Indian fellows. One that she's met from her tennis club. His name is Adnan. He has two partners, one in California, one in Texas, and they're trying to buy their first investment house. And they were trying to do it in the $150,000 range. She's treated it. I told her to give up on it because she spent a long time on it. But I said, I know as determined as you are, you're going to have to learn how to win this deal when you're working in that price range. I'm going to migrate off the builder thing just for a minute, okay? In that price range, there's things being said now like gap the difference between the appraisal and the actual purchase price. Let's say the purchase price, the offering price is 250. Let's say the offers have been escalated to 275. That means the buyer would come with $25,000 more at closing cash to win the deal. Another part of it waive inspections for a buyer that sounds awful yeah for a seller it sounds clean another thing is close in three weeks instead of 45 days because i've already got my pre-qualification ready in my hip pocket okay so when you have to try to win a deal in the under 250 i've seen kathy just she's on the phone with these guys 
at 10.30 till 11 o'clock after they lost in Brownsburg and they did everything. They even escalated the price purchase price. It's called an escalation course. No need totally understanding that until you're there. And then she would be an excellent resource to just call. And she's willing to do that. But in the range of builder construction, I talked to the president of Westport, which is now J.R. Horton. And the reason I said I want you guys to feel within our company, you could go to anybody, Lennar, J.R. Horton, Westport, Pulte, because you got to feel like over the years, the president of Lennar called me at home two days ago, and he gave me the new contact because one of his gals, Aaron Basker, is now gone into real estate. She's with Birch uh, oh. Pathway. So he gave me April Drow's name, and April is out of Zionsville. She was very efficient. I told her I wanted her to be a new point guard for us. To me, a new point guard means that they will give Beth the new specs every week, the updated specs, and then Beth can move those into your, uh, your file, okay? And then you can take that and promote the fact that we have relationships so that a client that might want to buy a new home will call you. Um, so anyway, I just, I felt compelled to tell you that let's, let's quit this idea of, of, of assigning an agent to a builder because you're not going to get their listings, but you can get their relationships. Okay. And there's so many of them that you're not going to run over the top of each other. And if you do, so what? Right. It's up to the client. Okay. It's up to the client. Do I want to work with Jesse Downey? Do I want to work with Jenny? Do I want to work with Greg, Mike? Or would I work with this old guy? So, you know, to me, uh, it's, it's all about how you, how you just uh, think I'm a, think I'm a light, being in the light, and not in the darkness. Because darkness says, what do I do? Who do I talk to? Light says, I'm going to go in, knock on the door, give them five or six of my cards. I mean, Susie over in town, Susie, what's her name? With Pulte, town meadow. So busy, she will not give me more than 30 seconds. But she lets me know I got 30 seconds. Okay. Donahue. But that's just her personality. But she did call back one time. She said, I'm sorry I was so short with you, but I am keeping your card just in case one of these $750,000 to $850,000 buyers has is it something to sell. So, you know, and the only reason I stopped by is because it's on my way. It might be on my way home. And I'd say, Larry, it's that one extra call that you never know when they're going to light you up a little bit. So Larry, when you, when we, cause Beth had sent out the spec homes for um, the Westport homes and the Lennar, Lenar, uh, you said they're not Westport anymore? They're J.R. Horton. Now. Okay. So if we go and talk to a rep about those spec homes, yep. we can yeah. just go to the model or do we need to contact your contact? Like this no. April you person? You go to the model. Okay. 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 You just go okay. to the model because my contact might be just a call like I made to Matt Dunn yesterday, who was the president of Westport. And I just thanked him again for the community book and the relationship. And I said, by the way, Matt, I really appreciate the fact that your, your gal is sending Beth all of those specs every week. And then I'm going to be on Zoom tomorrow and I will, I will initiate contact with my agents so they have an awareness. He said, by the way, Larry, he said, Lenar has 70 right now. We have 150 and we're going to put 300 more in the ground this spring. So J.R. Horton has got big bucks, okay? That's why they bought Westport. And he said, most of our activity, I said, where do you, where's your, where's your product at? He said, glad you asked. He said, our product is in Franklin Township, Hendricks, Hendricks, uh, county, uh, and my price point is 200 to a maximum of 500. Okay, I said, good, that's something great for my agents to know about. So when you get it, it just be, kind of comes a layer, and then I know he told me in Fishers they only have one product, one, one model out there, or a neighborhood, but 
there are other areas. He said we were in McCordsville, right? So a J.R. Horton contact like that, Jen. Mine is just to thank him for being in the book. We use the book as a catalyst to promote getting their specs. We use their specs as a catalyst to flick your brain to say, huh, our company has an inside track on some of these builders. It's up to me to go out and meet some of these model reps. And then grip on them, you know, just like an expired listing. Then you grip on them like that little note, like that letter, like that. Your resume can be a lot better than mine. Mine's too newsy, but but it's at least it's a resume, right? It's a it's a bio that people would might read it. There's going to be some people that are going to be looking for a realtor that reaches out like that. The builder thing is just so vibrant, though, when they're busier than they've ever been in a COVID market, and they're bolstered by interest rates that are as good, listen to this one, as good as what Key Bank told me yesterday. Greg, I think you, you met with a Key Bank representative, right? Yeah, I did. So here's a timely call. I'm talking to the guy from Woodland that jumped in and he said, I'd like to be, he said, I'm the area vice president. I know Pete. He likes to have a beer once in a while and play a lot of golf. And he said, I'd love to have you guys in. But I said, I need a good representative that we can at least tie into so we can get creative. So yesterday, um, I call Aaron Senzel, who's who, Aaron told me the first thing is just lit my heart up. He said, I just met with Greg. Okay. I just met with Greg Soto. And he said, he's got more things in his frying pan right now than I've seen from other agents in a long time and how to try to create some buyers to attach to it. So kudos, Greg. Okay. Thanks. But he also told me, he said, you know, we're, 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 we're located in Cleveland. And he said, Key Bank is going after doctors and dentists. We've just reinitiated our 100% doctor dentist loan with no money down. And we'll give them 2% mortgage on a seven-year arm. Wow. Okay. 2.25 on a 15-year fixed. And I heard from Flagstar yesterday that rates went up over three. So you just have to just see. But when, when that kind of communication comes back from a financial partner that's in our community book, right? And the only way that I can track them then is if I know the VPs. Jenny, I'm just kind of getting your message. You go out and call on them where, where, where it's really happening. Mine is just to see if I could start the relationship from the top and then maneuver so that we get in the battlefields of where things are really being sold. But the other side of the coin now, guys, is when, when I carefully have looked at these seven different financial companies, and I think who is going to be the best for my agents to build a partnership with based on leads generation, okay? That means a little different story. That's kind of like, well, they're not builder products, but they're mortgage people. And do they ever have people walking in or do they know somebody? You know, like what Greg did yesterday might just kick off a, a mechanism with Aaron Simsel that if he finds somebody looking for a house they want and they don't have an agent yet, they might call Greg. So in this arena of the financial partners, I'm trying to line you up with somebody that I think might be that type of a partner for you. It doesn't mean they're the only one you use. You use anybody you're comfortable with, but we've got seven good ones. Chase, Key, First Merchants, Annie Mack. Christy Porter's a gem. Um, she's got a personality. Casey Wilson's gonna be good. Um, and Jesse, she said some good things about your contact with her. Okay, Casey did. Very, she, she very, very anxious to kick in, and she's got 20 years experience, so she knows what's going on. <laughs> Cross country mortgage, 
I think Bobby, there's a new gal just going to be joining us. Her name is Kezia, K-A-Z-I-A. Kezia is uh, Pakistani, and she speaks three Indian languages plus Pakistan. She's been, I've been trailing her since November. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she's an interesting gal. She's an eight and nine-year-old. She's ready to go to work, and she lives in Avon, or she lives in Brownsburg, but I think uh, cross country would be good for her. So, of the banks we've got, you can always you can use anybody. I don't care if you use whoever you've got a relationship with. But these are the seven that are in the corporate book, and you are not bound to these people. You're bound to relationships that you develop. Okay, so I might this during first part of next week. I'll at least send out like I think to me. I think. Joe and Michael Cobb would be really are really good for first merchants. Mike, you know, um, and Dubonnet. Dubonnet sold their first uh, new construction, got paid on it today oh, with good. MI Home in Noblesville. So she's pumped up about that. But the builder thing with the way the market is, it just makes sense that we go visit. You add them into your, your being productive. Mm -hmm. Go from there. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I've done some talking enough that my mouth is dry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, close with some inspiration? Sure. Today is my 33rd anniversary in the pink bubble of yeah. Mary Kay. And I don't think I was quite ready for how the real world is outside of that bubble <laughs> until I did real estate. And I've probably learned more in the last three months, three or four months than I ever thought I could learn. And I've cried more in the last three months than I probably ever thought. <laughs> and well, I will not apologize for having a soft heart and getting my feelings hurt when a client does me dirty. I don't think I'll ever not have that soft heart. But um, you were talking about staying in the light and avoiding the darkness. And I've had a few dark days and Larry's had to talk me off the ledge. And <clears throat> there'll probably be a few more days of that, Larry. I'm just yeah. probably will. But the thing that has helped me and it has become my mantra is a scripture from Galatians 6, 9. And it says, let us not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So at a time where I was really down about um, something that happened, I just crack the Bible open and that's what it fell open to. So that's where it fell to. Mm -hmm. So if that helps you all, it's Galatians six, nine. So just don't give up, hang in there. People are going to sometimes be kind of poopy, but <laughs> you still be you and you still be kind and you still operate by the golden rule and you can put your head on the pillow at night and sleep well, knowing that Regardless, you took the high road and, and you did the right thing and there'll be a reward down the road. You just yeah, I love it. So, so that, that, that is, that's a blessing that you shared that with us. At the same right. time, I feel that when I say stay in the light and avoid the darkness, it's somewhat of what I do in the morning. I, just before I button up my tie, I don't know why I do this every day because Beth doesn't care if I wear a tie or not. We're here. But I just pop the Bible open and I, I just, it's maybe a, a quick glance at something that just catches me. And I say, I got to hang on to that today because there's enough things that want to drag you down. But if you, as a Christian, the devil wants to drag you down, right? And we're, we're, we're supposed to stay in the light because our light should be shining to others. And, it, you know, I've, I've made my mistakes in life, but I do know that, that is, that's helpful to me because it not only it makes me get out of here and I got to get away from these inspection reports because Beth is a lot better at it than I am, okay? Or get advice on how to handle this, that, or the other. But I know I'm good at popping by Old Town's office, letting my brain start to think. And I did this the other day, guys. I put Old Town's got something coming out of the ground in Holiday Farms. Holiday Farms is just like, 
electric. 300 lots sold, 150 lots ahead of their game plan. Every house is, you know, not, they don't all have to be expensive, but let's say 800, 850 to 2 million. Um, well, that's Aaron. That's Aaron Senzel, Greg. Um, I, I'm telling him, I said, so, so what I did with this is I got Jeff Langston to agree to let me take this foundation, put a price on it. They're not going to let me list it because they already had two offers. On it. The ideal thing would be let me list it. But the good thing is when I show him that I'm doing something for free, try to expand his brand. And yesterday he said, take D16. I said, what if, what if I apply one, either the model or something coming out of the ground that you haven't listed yet and let people know it's not listed, disclose that, but give them a sneak preview, preview on your social media reach to see if anybody might be interested in taking a look or getting in touch with me instead of their, their agent. Now, if they have an agent, I'm, I'm a loser. But at the same time, Jeff said, I like that idea. So when you, when you try to be thinking, how can I promote Jesse today? How can I make one call to a friend I haven't talked to for a while and then by at the end say, by the way, I'm in real estate now. If you know somebody looking and, and we're thinking about buying, if you could keep my name in mind, I'd sure appreciate it. The softer you are with that, the, 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 that's how you differentiate yourself from somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. The harder you are with that, people realize you've got dollar signs in the back of your head, and they tend to repel from that. But even if it's that one phone call, it's going to help. And I look at, I look at February. We've got a good February going. Um, I th still think there's a couple things out there that we can still do. But I did take this and I, I gave it to Aaron Senzel. And I said, Aaron, why don't you see what your marketing can do with this? Greg, you can piggyback that. What your marketing can do with this, with this doctor thing, because Mayo Clinic is in Cleveland. That's why they put this thing together. That's where Key Bank's headquarters are. And then they've reached it out to other markets now. But somehow they've got they've got all this thing that Facebook and AdWorks and Google search are wanting you to buy. They've got the retargeting. They know where the people are popping the internet. They keep track of those things. I know because Facebook called me yesterday from Washington and they wanted to promote giving them two ads <clears throat> to put on my Facebook. By the time I was done with her, she was going to give me two uh, Two more ads for free and, and Instagram for free for some for them. I thought, okay, that sounds good. But before you know how to measure it, if you can't measure it, why just keep buying things? If you can, because Sam is putting out some Facebook things for me. And if we learn how to measure the measure it to get started, it's probably better than just buying these zip codes and other things that everybody else is trying to do. You can, guys, if you do what I've just talked about today, start to build your business in a basic way that will really start to pay benefits as you go. I believe that. And maybe I'm old school, but I, I'm listening to these Facebook things. It sounds good, but it starts adding up to unless we can measure it. If you can measure it and you can spend the money to get the leads coming in, great, wonderful. As long as you're you, you're controlling what you're spending to see what results you're going to get, right? So, and I know Greg, maybe you've got some, maybe you've got a little input on that for for the girls. Yeah, I mean, I I space out. I mean, I watch so many videos. I space out what I do, and actually, you know, I just this morning I was doing a Facebook post to promote my my page and also <clears throat> to uh, promote again. Um, my Homadi relationship for listings and all the services that I can provide uh, for future clients. Um, 
So I'm strategically doing it in, in a certain way where I'm gathering uh, information. Uh, I've looked at some videos on Facebook uh, marketing and ad placement. Um, and I know Facebook has done a couple of things where you can't be so detailed, but there is a way around it. So I've been learning on that um, almost uh, to be very detailed and about farming for certain, uh, certain areas as well. So um, yeah, and it can, it can add up. Like you said, Larry, it can definitely add up money wise. Um, but I do set myself a limit and I do it every three weeks, two and a half to three weeks, um, just to keep them, you know, uh, fresh in their mind of who I am. I had some engagement uh, with a good post and I'm actually going to use that same post again because it got good feedback. It got good engagement. So there I'm going to continue go. to use the same exact post, but now, you know, um, you know, adding more detailed targeting on what they could be looking at on Facebook. Um, and that's the thing too. That's one thing that I learned through watching people that do specific marketing. If you have a gold post and all of them are not going to be gold, you know, the picture of my dog is not probably going to be gold and not going to get me a lead or, you know, even though I post it. Um, so I just went back and I looked at some of the posts that I did and one did really good about two and a half weeks ago. So now I'm going to redo that the same one, you know, cause it was gold. So, um, if it's good, it's good. I'm not going to recreate the wheel and make another similar post. I'm going to just push that one again because it, it did a good job at engagement, but yeah, it could definitely add up. So you kind of have to be careful on that. Hey, Greg, <clears throat> could you, could you share that? I think the girls are probably, if I was reading Jenny's brain, it was big. I wonder what Greg's post was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, Greg, it's, check yeah. out his Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> I you know, and that's it. another thing too. I did uh, uh, one thing that I'm big on when you look at any of my Twitter or the Facebook page, um, anything like that, uh, you'll see that I use certain meta hashtags and that has gotten some more play as well. Uh, I did a meta, meta hashtag search of what uh, in real estate um, are being used the most, you know, in the millions to hundreds of thousands. And uh, I have 30, I have 37, I believe, 37, 38, 36. Yeah, 36 uh, meta hashtags that I use um, usually throughout all my posts one way or another because those meta hashtags are used all across social media sites. And if you, which was interesting. Um, so yeah, like if you do a meta hashtag search on like Twitter or something like that, um, your post will most likely come up. It's like kind of like when they used to do uh, Google search spiders back in the day. You know, you had to do certain certain words that would get you up in the Google search. Well, meta hashtags are very similar. So somebody goes into Twitter or Facebook and does a meta, meta hashtag search. If you use that meta hashtag, your post recently, whenever they do their search, will show up um, ahead of others um, in, in their timeline. So I use that a lot and I can definitely share that with anybody. You know, I've already done the search and um, I've got it down to how many posts per million, how many posts an hour, how many average likes, how many minimum likes that meta hashtag has and comments that usually the average comments for that particular meta hashtag. So I've done that all for the real estate part of it as well. So Greg, how, how do we share some of that? Can we, can we use, so this is what I think is very valuable about these sessions like this. What Greg is just saying puts you in a different category of targeting yep. the buyers. Am I right, Greg? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could actually, when you do a Facebook, when you do a Facebook uh, post um, in an ad, you can get more detailed targeting. <clears throat> Like right now, I actually have one open right now where uh, I'm basically in there's, oof, I want to say there's maybe like over a hundred something different detailed targeting, but anything that's involved, what I do is I take the time and I click down on that particular ad that I'm, that I'm putting out and I literally will check mark anything and everything that has to do with home. Air con like, like now I have air conditioning, apartment guide, apartment, apartment listing, architecture and design, building, building material, condominium, connected investors, 
construction, credit history. So I go down the line and anything that's an interest that would be detailed targeting that somebody does on Facebook, there I'm making sure that my ad, if they do that, will show up just like many other ads that choose that particular, but um, in like a 15 mile radius from where I live. So this particular ad right now, I'm being told that it's going to probably reach on a daily basis 9.4 up to, it could be up to 9,400 uh, 9, people a day. Um, so if I do it for five days, you know, then we're talking quite a bit of amount of people for five days. We could be talking over 45,000 people unique people that could be reached per day. And the minimum is going to be maybe like 15,000. Um, but that's that particular ad that I liked. It's, it has my picture, you know, Century 21 Rasmussen. Um, it has my Realtor um, badge on there and my Homadi Premier Agent tag. And it also that video that did very well. So not only did I promote the video already, but now I'm promoting my whole page. So I'm literally with all of this, I'm going to spend today most likely about 45 bucks. So when we talk about farming and po paying for postage, and I thought about this after speaking with Jess um, a couple of weeks back, I'm like, oh, it's great. You know, I'll spend 80, I don't know what, 84 bucks on postage on a postcard for 250 people where I could spend 45 bucks right now and have a potential to reach about 45,000 in five days in my area that oh. open up Facebook. And I do get analytics after it's all done. I'll have a breakdown of analytics of men, women. Um, did they open it on their phone? Was it on this? How long did they take? Did they click on the video? You know, so what you said, you know, can you go back to that and then really look at the analytics of, well, okay, did it work? Did it not work? And that's what I use to say, okay, this video worked. So now I'm going to use this video, not just to promote my page, but also to promote the video again. So I'm almost doubling down where some of these people are not only going to see my, my, my page get promoted, but they're also going to see the video. So, so I can, so I can be in their frame of mind. Yeah. Say what? Greg, why don't you just do one of our Friday Zoom calls and let's yeah, that's right. Let's, let's <laughs> do that. Greg teaches I, to be social media kings and queens. <laughs> I don't I mean I can. can do, I don't know if we can do that effectively on Zoom. It's do you think we can, Greg, or would it be good if share we could, a screen? Yeah, I could share I could share a screen and then um, I could always share the screen and, and go from there. Yeah, and, and just let everybody do it. No. Would you guys be interested because this is a hot topic and, and it's something that gets you energized to catch a lot, lot larger audience. Yeah. When I, when I drive to Fishers and I drive, I used to drive to Fishers because my, my daughter lived in Meadowbrook Village. Some of you know where that's at. Um, and then she lived in Breakwater and now she lives off 113th and uh, Olio in the neighborhood. But Beth lives out there, and I got a list in on 104th. But when I drive myself back to Carmel, I think of the neighborhoods I used to farm, get out of my car, and tell myself, "This, Greg, this is exactly what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Every day, I tell myself, Larry, you've got to hit 20 houses today to be effective. You've got to put something in 20 people's, and at that point, I could get it at their front door. Okay? I used to just walk my legs off but i got listings in diamond point if you if you guys people know where diamond point is. by doing things like that because i had a plan that daily i was touching base with 20 people i didn't know but let them get to know me sometimes it works technology puts you in a whole different window as long as you're targeting and messaging the right way I have I just a really quick question and it would be on here an hour. And, but I have visited a ton of model homes, you know, Charity and Sue Salgi and Tammy and Brandy and all, I know them all now. So is it legit to just call them up <clears throat> and say, you know, how can I promote your neighborhood on social media, <clears throat> do you have anything that I can post for you? Anything in my sphere of influence? I mean, can you just do that? 
I mean, we could based on the fact that we represent Pulte and Pulte's told me we can, we can, you know, i.e. use Tiago as a, as a property that's finished to promote in your social media. Because even like Serenade, Sarah Stamper will send something. I mean, we get all these emails all the time from everybody and it might be just a, an icon of what's left in their neighborhood. Can we just... I don't see why that couldn't be public or why they would either. impose us. I, yeah, I think I think you can share that or send it off. I mean, mm. they're sending it to you. Obviously, yeah. they want you to and send it to other people. And it's free advertising for them. Yeah. Hey, Susan, if it yeah. was a listing by another company, though, then you got a then you got a bit of an issue. Okay. Yeah. Let's say there's a listing with Sheets Company. Uh, I wouldn't do it then. Okay. But I might take something coming out of the ground and then use the video that Pulte's got, link it to their video to get that kind of attention. Okay. Hey, can I ask if maybe, because this is a hot topic, can we bring Greg into maybe next Friday Zoom to talk about exactly this? We'll, we'll have another, instead of every two weeks, let's do, if it's okay, let's do next Friday if that works. That would be. Greg, you're going to be famous. <laughs> Yeah, we got an hour good. in today, which is wonderful. Uh, hopefully, this is somewhat inspiring. Um, inspiring enough for me that I knew that a vendor said that, i.e., Zach Johnson about Jenny. Mm -hmm. Susan's got her mind going in the right places now. We're trying to dig up leech. She turned a, a no sale into an 840. Jesse, you've got. Flagstar Bank saying she's going to really be good. But if you didn't have those bigger contacts, you might be swimming with all the fish that don't know what direction they're going. You just have to keep your head straight, stay in the light, turn away from things that are going to bog you down too much. Just keep so, swimming. <laughs> yeah. you know? But if we can do that, Greg, are you up for that next Friday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm up for that, and okay. and it'll be it'll be good. I mean, I'm I'm I'm. Don't get me wrong. I'm still learning all the Facebook stuff because it, it is very detailed. Sure. But yeah, I just looked at. Um, it's very cool how they can do it. But yeah, just to give you everybody a heads up, like the one that I'm going to do for my page, it could potentially reach a 15 mile radius where I live. It could potentially reach up to it says up to 810,000 people. So, or a different accounts. So, I mean, like I said, and, and it breaks it down for you. It'll be really interesting. But yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. No big deal. I mean, our, well, it's good, man. Like I'm Listen, doing let's, it. Let's just stay really on track now. I mean, uh, to me, uh, we're, we're in the right, right ballpark. Interesting market. Um, collectively, if we, we know we're getting out of the toughest months of the year, um, February usually can be a good month. But March will even be better, so. Thanks for coming. Have a good weekend. If you guys want to stay on for a little bit, I got to run Designsville to a closing. So I'm heading out. Okay. Talk it to them. All right. All right. See you later. Thanks, Larry. All right. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye, guys. I got to get out of here. Okay. Bye. Have a good weekend. You. you too.